Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, in our ever-changing economy, America is once again turning to innovation as our pathway to economic success. Yet in today's world, innovation is tightly coupled with science, technology, engineering, and math, what are commonly referred to as the STEM subjects. But a growing movement is underway to change STEM into STEAM recognizing that without the application of aesthetics like art and design, we create highly educated students without the skills application needed in the workplace. Often in classrooms, kids don't create anything. They replicate, they copy, they emulate, but they don't create. Well, now we look at STEM and we look at STEAM, we have this chance to let kids actually create, to own their learning. Now we'll hear more from educator and STEAM advocate Kevin Honeycutt in just a bit. But before we do, I want to take you inside a STEAM maker camp where instructors are turning the letter T in STEAM into tinkering and the A into aesthetics, all in an effort to engage students with a hands-on learning approach by changing how we teach. When pigs fly and cats ears wave. One of these blades costs us $10. Learning is taking place. Traditional book learning, it's not, but a hands-on approach that grabs students' attention. Ginger Lumen is an education consultant with SDAC and the creator of a camp called Steammaker. Steammaker Camp has actually been uh, a brainchild of mine for the past couple years. I've been uh, lucky fortunate to be able to, to, to grow this sort of environment. It, it stems out of the background of STEM from 2004, those initiatives where we're trying to get more science, technology, engineering, and mathematics into the classroom. As we've progressed through the years, it's now 2015, uh, we were working on, in education, the front edge is the maker education movement, where kids are getting their hands on. And we're looking at STEAM, and instead of it being the traditional science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which is great, it's actually science tinkering, engineering, aesthetics, and mathematics. It's, it's a different view. I would love it. Camilla Shaw says she would be excited to come to school. Because like, I love hands-on activities. I can't stand sitting down and just sit in it. I got to do something. And while the kids are having fun, Ginger says it's the teachers she hopes to help. This is actually, it looks like it's a camp for kids, but it's really a camp for teachers. And the kids are here to help the teachers see how it might work with their kids in their own environment. What the teachers are learning is they're learning how to support while letting go. I'm not the sage on the stage. I don't really want to be the guide on the side either because that means I'm not engaged with them. I want to be the meddler in the middle. I want to be the one who sees where they're at and pushes them farther. I don't care if they come to me, a genius in the classroom already knowing things. Great, there's more to learn. And I don't care if they come to me really far behind. I'm going to start where they are and push them and that everybody gets to learn something new every day. So the teachers are learning how to do that without being, I'm the one in charge and I'm going to. They're learning how to help kids get through struggles without yelling and saying, get to work. Man, no, no quicker way to kill energy than yelling at a kid. How do we want them, get them to want to learn? And that's what we're learning. Yeah, there you go, man. Sweet. And the students are theirs to help the teachers learn. Teachers bring their own students because oftentimes I hear with my project and problem-based learning workshops is they say, oh, that's fine, Ginger, but this doesn't work with my kids because my kids are too... They're too poor, they're too brown, they're too rich, they're too gifted, they're too slow. It don't work with mine, it won't work with mine. And so I thought, let's, why are we doing professional learning about kids without kids? So let's do that. And that's what Steammaker Camp is, is that they bring their own kids that they work with on a regular basis, and they'll get to see kind of a drive-by on how this might look on a very short-term basis. Now, what would it look like? You saw those kids right, who never came alive, now they are? This is in three days. What would it be like in three months, three years, if they had the opportunity to learn like this every day? Because what we see is kids who sit like bumps in the classroom come alive when they're asked to. And teachers like Jean Hart, what do you want to do to the head? Are happy with what they're seeing. I have watched my kids really blossom 
and it's so exciting because even the quiet ones, they, even though if they don't say much, they're doing. They're jumping in. My quietest one is jumping in and quietly doing things. And we go, who wants to do this? He just gets on it and does it. And it, it's amazing to watch. Just ask Sam. Like, say how you can use them correctly. Sam Robeson is Jean's student and says it's exciting to learn. It's just like the hands-on aspect of everything we did allows us to learn so much more than just a lecturer at the front of the room and us taking notes or something, you know, whenever we're there, whenever we're teaching each other and learning together, I think it's just so much more powerful. According to elementary school teacher Mary Eddins, this type of instruction does away with some traditional stereotypes. Because even growing up, I've kind of seen, you know, like jobs for women, jobs for men, like not that mixture, because that's like, you know, the school system that I grew up in. And it's just like great to see the like my girls when they were in deconstruction they took apart a dvd player put it back together like right away and that's like something i would have never thought like what like you guys just did that and it was just so great just to kind of get those stereotypes erased for the three days for briley owen the different types of hands-on is what she enjoys this would be really fun in a class it's better than getting out a textbook being able to get be able to do it by your, like on your own and be able to like experience it and have hands on it and be able to do the activities. It's a lot easier to do it as a team than by yourself. Because if I had to do any of that by myself, I would have not have been able to do it. A collaborative process that helps students develop soft skills like teamwork. Oh, it's been great from the beginning, actually. A lot of teams are having a lot of struggle. I mean, we were doing pretty good at the beginning, but we've actually built from that. And whenever you're working as a team, you don't feel like you're lesser, not as important, like you shouldn't pay attention. Everybody feels equal and like they should play a part. And I think it, it really helps you to learn as yourself. Learning that Ginger says starts with how it's taught. And so when we help teachers learn to teach in a new way. I believe that teachers teach how they're taught. And if I am professional learning, expect them to do something differently, then I have to do something differently for them to learn. But in the world of where I stand at the front of the room and tell you what to, when to, how to, well, when does a kid get to learn to ask those questions of themselves? I know a lot of really brilliant kids who when they leave high school and there's nobody telling them what to, when to, how to, fall apart. That's a, that's a problem. Like, Likewise, we have students who today? really, school is about a lot of times or has been in the past a lot about memorization. Some kids have learning disabilities where memorization doesn't work for them and we call them stupid. When you put these things with <laughs> things in their hands, these kids truly do come alive. Let me pause here. <laughs> and they're no longer stupid. They're the ones in the classroom who become true geniuses. And we, who may be better at school, look at them in a new light and say, wow, you have a real value and how can I help you really, really bloom. And the teachers here are themselves blooming with knowledge of how to bring learning to life. The kids are so much more passionate and they want to do it. They, they asked me, they said, can we learn this way all the time? Making a difference in how a child learns, one teacher at a time. Now one teacher kind of hit the nail on the head when she told us she wants to use hands-on learning to show her students how math relates to the real world. Her example, wind energy. Before, her students would do equations and maybe watch a video, but now they'll be able to put what they learn into action and be able to measure the output of energy by actually building projects in the classroom. Now when we return, my conversation with one of the leaders in the STEAM movement, Kevin Honeycutt. 